Um, so um, we'll start now. Um, good afternoon and welcome everyone. Um, today's session is um, with Chase India and a very warm welcome to uh, Manish. I believe that's the name. Yes, hi, good afternoon. Hello. Um, so we have uh, Manish here today with us, who's the executive vice president and co-founder of um, Chase India. We're also joined by Sharangsha, who's a consultant at Chase. Um, just a brief introduction about Chase India. It is a research-based consulting firm that specializes in public policy and government affairs. So along with um, um, helping organizations adapt strategies to engage with public policy stakeholders in a compelling and effective manner. Um, so welcome um, to uh, both Manush and Sharang. And we also have um, Dashita and um, Lida today for um, from the OCS or GGI. Um, so over to you, Manush. Yeah, hi. Uh, has Sharan joined? Uh, do we wait for a minute? Sharan is here. Yeah, sorry. Uh, my network's falling. But, uh, give me a minute. No problem. No problem. Hi. So, uh, how do you want us to kind of take it? Sharan, you have a flow or just kind of interruptions and then. Hi, so I will start. I think Sharang's network is a little bad. So, uh, so I don't know how much you guys know about Chase. Uh, I have a small deck. I'll try and pull it up uh, and then take you through that. Uh, then we can maybe talk about what we do a little bit and take questions from you. Is that fine? Um, yes, we can do that. Um, so uh, I do. You have to give me the screen sharing uh, permission. Oh yes, sorry. Yeah, I think, I think you got it now, right? Yeah, one second. Uh, yeah, Sharon, uh, can everyone see this? Yeah, uh, Sharon, this is uh, so this is about what we do. So, do we do a yeah. cred creds also? I have a creds deck which I can share. So, we can start with it. Let's start with this and then we can move to the creds basically. Yeah. What we do internally. Sure, sure. So I think uh, uh, we uh, chase a pure play policy advocacy uh, uh, government affairs agency, uh, and we have been around for more than uh, eleven years now. So basically, uh, we are the intersection of kind of business, politics, and policy. Uh, that's what we do. And uh, Sashan, can you move on? I think this is fine. So again, I, I, I know how much you need to understand all of it. I think you guys already have in the curriculum about how laws and regulations are made. So let's quickly move on from here. So these are basically uh, when we talk about what a, a consultancy firm like Chase da, does, um, we, we, I, I, we kind of involved in public, uh, selling it's moving very fast, <laughs> sorry. So, yeah. So, uh, can you go back a couple of slides? Or maybe I can do the sh uh, sharing. It'll be easier for me. I know which slides are important. Sure. One second. You guys give me one minute.
uh, is the same deck showing up here now? Uh, Sharang is showing. Uh, yeah, uh, one of the decks is the credentials one. Uh, not the one which you were showing. No, no, this is the right one. So we can start off with basically what do we do, and then maybe explain a bit more about advocacy at the end of it. Yeah. So I I actually don't know what, where, which which is showing at the moment. I'm trying to. Sorry, we seem to be having some technical issues at our end. Yeah. yeah, now is it showing? Uh, Shari is showing now? Yeah, it is. The yes, yes. Cool one? Okay, quickly. So I'll, I'll take you through this now. So, uh, so what 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 uh, public policy uh, is involved? What who, what we do and who are stakeholders for us? Uh, as I, I'm sure you guys know, it's more more to do with the lawmakers, both at the bureaucracy level and the and the parliament or the political level. So uh, so I'll straight come to this slide, which talks about stages of pub policy making or law processing. Uh, 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 structure in the country basically so this i i know that you have a you have this in your curriculum you, you already know about this but in this if you look at it right from uh, releasing a draft to eventually becoming a bill uh, there are multiple stages where a consultancy or a, or a public policy firm can play a role so this is where we try and kind of come in uh, with the right narrative uh, for the right uh, industry and and try and uh, kind of uh, give enough evidence to the to the policymakers, the lawmakers, and see how we can kind of argue it out with them and try and put across our point of view in in the draft stage or in the in, in the final stage of a law or a policy policy basically or or a, or, a, or a act eventually. So uh, so what does it all mean uh, for our business and what do we do here? Is basically, for example. Uh, in any existing policy or in any existing law, there are always gaps uh, or concerns. For example, the industry is always evolving. And while it evolves, there are always kind of enough areas for the law to be not kind of in sync with the business. So that's where uh, a, a company or industry needs help to find the gaps and how to, how to kind of address those gaps basically. Similarly, for example, there are also need for, uh, in, in, for example, any uh, social impact issues, which needs uh, a, a kind of a looking at the law or looking at the uh, act is again where a consulting firm like us kind of play a role. Uh, thirdly, again, from a stakeholder management or, or, a, or a government relation point of view, it is, it is where uh, at multiple levels, which the slide which I showed earlier uh, in, the, in the life cycle of a lawmaking is that's where uh, the various touch points of a consulting firm, uh, how they kind of play a role is, is called government relation basically. So again, going back to basics, basically what we do as a firm, uh, this slide will give you clarity and if, uh, please stop me if you kind of need, uh, if you have questions and Sharon, you can add your points also here. Basically, it starts from as basic as kind of doing uh, tracking, finding insights, uh, or kind of interpreting uh, a, a policy or a law or a regulation, which will impact a client of ours. So when you, when you track, it's a real time, basically intelligence of what's happening in the issue. For example, you guys must be uh, already kind of hearing, following a lot of, lot of discussions around the, the PDP bill, which is kind of the uh, personal data protection bill, which was kind of self now uh, a couple of days back. But in the cycle, in the life cycle of that bill, uh, which is over the last five years, uh, every concerned industry or company will need to understand where it's moving, how it's moving, uh, which are the important stakeholders, uh, which are which has a say, which might play a role in the eventual kind of a law. So that's where uh, 
a chase kind of uh, does a real time analysis interpretation of what's happening and what it means for the business of the uh, business or, or, or the industry is what we interpret and give it to the client while doing that we also kind of uh, uh, while doing that we also try and map the stakeholders dynamically for example uh, what i mean by stakeholders here is it's not just the just the uh, uh, bureaucrats and the uh, the parliamentarians who decides a law it's also multiple stakeholders which plays a role in the drafting stage in the consultation stage for example academia academia uh, think tanks uh, industry bodies they all play a role so depending on what stage of the life cycle of the the the, the act or the uh, policy is these stakeholders keep evolving so real time also mapping the stakeholders become a role of a consulting firm like us once we kind of once we start tracking interpreting the policy or or the or the issue um, and once we start mapping the stakeholders what become very important is the the narrative building the story building basically so as you could understand now uh, if there are multiple stakeholders and every stakeholders come uh, to play their role at certain point of their uh, of the, of the life cycle of the bill so here every stakeholder needs a kind of a more bespoke kind of narrative which they can understand so here again a consulting firm like us play a role where we kind of completely build the the the, the build the narrative build the content and see how that can be customized and fed to various stake stakeholders basically how do we kind of go to various stakeholders explain them what we mean and what our point of views are how do we collect enough evidence for example and and take take those evidence to them and explain them uh, why our point of view should be at least considered or looked looked into so again this narrative building goes through uh, uh, can be communicated with the stakeholders in multiple ways for example uh, we writing an article in a newspaper or a publication also is a way of indirectly kind of communicating your point of view to the stakeholders similarly uh, uh, there are uh, uh, multiple representations for example you can do the representation directly or indirectly for example you can indirectly when i say uh, multiple industry bodies like fiki ci and ascom depending on which sector you work in they also become a conduit or or a or a or a, or a, a, a stakeholder who can pass on your communication to the to the eventual stakeholders who are making the policy similarly uh, uh, and the last stage of of our what we do is the engagement part so once we kind of uh, uh, do the mapping have the story ready with us have the narrative ready with us have the evidence ready with us we eventually kind of uh, try and see how we can engage with the stakeholders so engaging in, in, with stakeholders can be multiple way you can straight away go to a policy maker put your point across you can find ways to convene multiple seminars webinars where we can get those people in the room uh, argue those uh, points evidence with them and 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 uh, come up with some conclusion which can be again submitted to the stakeholders similarly uh, you can also look at multiple ways of partnering with the stakeholders uh, how how can you work with this? how can you collaborate with them basically all of them chadu chadu tha na sorry sorry for that um, um go ahead sorry yeah yeah so again that's uh, that also plays a role uh, so all of it is is a typically what it looks like in any of our mandate at chase or a similar policy consulting firm so this is the most important slide and then uh, when i when i talk about this slide and talk about engagement uh, these are multiple tools which we use uh, as i was talking about few of them these are multiple tools which we eventually use to advocate our point of view so we talked about one on one meetings we talked about uh, industry associations we talked about third party citizen groups uh, 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 we talked about academic uh, academic partners for example if i if i Uh, build a credible paper along with the institution uh, like yours or any other academic institution that becomes a strong unbiased credible paper for us to take it to government stakeholders for them to have a look and consider our point of views similarly uh, again creating forums uh, 
in the life cycle of these discussions of policy amendment or sorry, uh, uh, act amendment or uh, or uh, kind of uh, uh, law making uh, you can also create multiple forums or or kind of a more uh, bespoke groups which can be the voice of what we are trying to say uh, so we have an example i think uh, in our case study i can show you that what it means here and then last is uh, definitely media and and today uh, social media becomes an important way of communicating what you want to communicate to the stakeholders sometimes you have to be sensitive around how much how aggressive you want to become on media or social media uh, so again topic to topic depending on what stage of uh, urgency you are you can use media or you can stay away from media as a tool to communicate or tool to advocate for a for an issue so i'll pause here i'll uh, i'll take some questions if you guys have and maybe shalang if you can come in yeah i'll just come in with one thing uh, so manish has kind of explained what we do in policy advocacy specifically <laughs> i'll just zoom out a little bit and ask kind of explain where we lie in the spectrum of policy making uh, also i think there might be a lot of confusion because you've probably seen roles from let's say a kpmg and evi or deloitte in public policy or government advisory and what we it was very different so i just wanted to explain the difference between the two types of consultants they are consultants to the government directly and they uh, advise them on how to create the policies so in form policy formulation what we do is we advise clients in the private sector and foundations on how to on their government relations strategy essentially how should they engage with the government we help them identify the gaps in policy that could affect them and we try and uh, communicate their position after researching it essentially so just wanted to clarify that a little bit so that you aren't confused between the two yeah, so again, go ahead with that. yeah again again um, uh, zooming out from what we're discussing yeah. here so traditionally if you look at it this role or this uh, specialized policy advocacy role uh, was always a area which was was falling between a big four or a law firm or a ca firm Uh, so they typically used to kind of play the role of somehow communicating what a private sector or a or a or a, or a public sector wants to kind of communicate to the policy makers but over the last 10 15 years it's getting more and more structured there's a role uh, which people like us play uh, again it can be as nuanced as advising advising uh, companies about the cultural sensitivities about the country for example uh, when these large big tech companies come they come with some bit of a uh, preconceived notion about how policy is made in the country they also come with some bit of uh, 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 again uh, using the word uh, arrogance of where they come from so how do you kind of handhold them how to communicate with each stakeholder in a more sense culturally sensitive way is also some role is a role which a consulting firm like us play So yeah. So I'll any questions? Yeah. Yeah. yeah okay. Go ahead. So, uh, like, uh, hi, Manash, and hi, Shara. uh first of all like i am able to uh, uh, understand that we will be uh, basically playing the role of policy analysis right not in the formulation part but more in the analysis uh, region like the policy already exists we will analyze it and then we will communicate it uh, with all the stakeholders like the private firms like how they can engage with the government or uh, better to play their position uh, am i get getting it right i so so let me let me uh, come in here sarang you can add so when you say policy formulation actually uh, a policy is drafted or kind of uh, formulated by the government stakeholders and the and the political stakeholders but they take uh, views and consultation from the larger kind of uh, uh, community uh, who are interested in the, in the topic so here while we are kind of trying to build a narrative and all explain as i said in the in the life cycle of law making everywhere we play a role so at some, at every stage uh, there's a 
communication or a or a or a exchange of views with the with the government stakeholders. So, for example, uh, let's let's look at the EV policy. Okay, on the EV uh, uh, multiple subsidies which are coming under the same uh, scheme. So here, uh, we we are working for one section of the EV battery guys, the swappable batteries. Okay, there are, there are fixed batteries in a in a in a bike and the swappable batteries. So what we are working on is the swappable battery side of it. So what we are doing here is as we speak, Niti Aayog came up with a draft. Niti Aayog came up with a draft on what the EV battery policy should be on standardization, on, on, on multiple issues, multiple structures. They came up with a draft. And, and the swappable battery guys were late in the, in the, uh, in the discussion. So th this entire draft was made in, in keeping in consideration the fixed guys, like the Ola or the, uh, or the uh, bounce, or whoever the hero guy is, the fixed fixed vehicle, the OEM guys, keeping them in mind, this was made. But as we know now, the swappable batteries are playing a huge role in multiple EV developing countries. So they, they are a, a, a sector we cannot ignore. So we came at a place along with this industry and we tried to communicate a technical reason why they should be considered, why they should be also given similar subsidy under the fame scheme, which is coming to them. So, uh, and, and we got success there in, in the last uh, uh, union budget, uh, the swappable batteries were also considered under the fame policy. So, so again, there's a long battle, but one part of it was there. So uh, when you say formulation part, it's, a, it's, a, it's ideally should be joined. Sometimes uh, the government kind of bulldoze over others, uh, but in a, in, a, in, a, in a natural process, you are supposed to be consulted. And how you consult, how you put your point across is, is the role of a consulting firm like us. Again, again, while we were giving our point of views uh, on this issue, we, 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 we cannot just go, go there and say, this is right, this is wrong. Uh, we had to go with a lot of evidence. So we had to tie up with IIT Delhi to work on a paper. Uh, this, this paper was a completely uh, a neutral, credible paper. And the paper talked about how this industry can grow to X billion and why it also needs enough support from government. And wh why you cannot only, only rely on fixed batteries because we don't have enough charging points and also we need to have swappable batteries otherwise, which, is, which are more plug-in, plug, plug out kind of a, uh, infrastructure. So all that, that paper played a big role. So again, it was our idea to go to IIT Delhi to come up with a paper. So that creativity, that thinking has to come from a consulting like us. Yes, so uh, like we'll be able to nudge the policy in the right direction or better direction, wherever we are saying uh, like gaps exist, so yeah. we can cover those gaps. Okay. Yeah. Again, 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 a nuance here. It's not that every time the policymakers uh, has anything biased against any industry. Sometimes if you don't raise your voice, if you don't put your point across, they, they also are limited in their understanding. So if you don't expose them to what is there, they will go by their own convictions. So it's very important to come up with your point of view and, and kind of argue it out with them. And uh, just adding to what Manu said, sometimes what ends up happening is uh, rules and laws are made with a specific target audience in mind. And I can give you the example of the gig economy. Uh, they, when they were making those rules, they were thinking about Uber drivers and Ola drivers and urban cab people. But because of the way they phrased it, even Airbnb hosts were a very, very different category, kind of got categorized with the same thing. Uh, because they were seen as people who are 100% on it all the time, even though like hosting isn't a full-time job really. So sometimes what happens is your communication is just about, hey, you know what, you were planning to do this and we understand that and it's great. But also this is a collateral damage that is occurring because it hasn't been voted by. Thank you so much. Uh, any other questions? Okay, I guess not. Okay, so if uh, there's no other question, I think there's a slight uh, deck uh, about us. I'll try and see if I can pull it up. I'm struggling with the.
sharing thing So, uh, is it showing, Shalom? Uh, Shalom is it showing. Oh, yes, yes we can see his screen. Yeah, 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 it's showing. Sorry, you can't see that. Uh, the 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 deck. Yeah. 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 So yeah, so I think this is a, a quick intro about us. Uh, then maybe you can hear about you guys also. But uh, it's a, as I say, it's a it's a, uh, a consulting firm which we started almost in uh, almost uh, eleven years back, and uh, we are part of a larger group called V Communication, which is headquartered of Seattle. We have two firms here, two group companies here. One is called Avian V, which is a pure play communication firm, and Chase India, and both are held by a company called V Communications out of Seattle, and. Um, I think we already talked about what what we do. So again, I'll repeat some of these. So I, I talked about insights building for clients of ours. Then this policy or stakeholder analysis, the mapping part. Then this the stakeholder management part, the engagement part, which we talked about. In in some ways, we talked about content building, the narrative building, and then we also talked about issues in crisis management. Uh, so this is again an ongoing thing for all our clients. We have to be completely ready with what our arguments are if, if there's a, a crisis for the client. Uh, one area which we also kind of do a lot of work is thought leadership. For example, companies always don't fight or struggle to put their point in a rule or, a, or an act or, a, or stuff like that. They also need to kind of build a thought leadership, uh, build a brand. Uh, so that this is where uh, we try and see how they, their key areas of focus can be aligned with some of the relevant focus areas of the government. So it can be as, as simple as Swaj Bharat, it can be uh, Make in India. So we, we look at uh, from state and central perspective, what, what are the multiple areas where which align with the client's uh, uh, objectives. And see, and then we we look at ways to collaborate with the government and, and build those thought leadership for them, build those uh, properties for them, which which eventually help them to be better recognized by the government stakeholders. Uh, then we talked about I think media here. So it's a advisory board. So we we have people from industry. Some of these you guys will know. Uh, Fab India chairman. Then we have a lot of uh, uh, retired bureaucrats. Uh, former IS officers who retired as, as senior secretary government of India. Then we have technical regulatory people also, people from RBI, people from ICMR uh, and industry. Um, yeah, as and, and uh, independently of the client mandates as Chase, we have been over so many years also trying to build our own uh, thought leadership. So some of these topics are not uh, what you see on the first uh, row, uh, these are not a uh, topic which are uh, mandated by any client or any donor for us. These are some of these uh, mandates have been picked up by Chase uh, and, and, and trying to build our own leadership in this space, uh, like in, in environment, uh, climate space, uh, in uh, health space, we try and build those. Second row, if you see the engagement platform, so we have a, a product called uh, Chase Dialogue. And Chase dialogues are kind of, uh, 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 there are three, three kind of dialogue. One is Chase Earth dialogue, which is more of around climate sustainability. Then we have a Chase Tech dialogue. And the last is uh, Chase Health dialogue. So on multiple mandates, what we do as Chase, so we don't need a, a third party partner to kind of convene that for us. We as Chase with our credibility, we can get people in the room who can brainstorm, discuss on a topic which is current and then uh, uh, based on various inputs from all of them, we try and make a paper which is submitted to the, to the relevant people in the in the uh, uh, government side of it. Then we are we are uh, we we work a lot with the various uh, 
multilaterals uh, and, and high commissions and embassies. This is a quick snapshot of some of our clients. I think this is a little old slide, but we work with uh, sectors. So we, we are quite strong on the tech side of it. Uh, our, one of our first clients was uh, AMD, Google, Dell, and they continue to be a client of us. Uh, on the tech, FinTech side, we work a lot with multiple uh, big brands. Uh, then we also have ventured into health uh, uh, sector. And, and now we do a lot of work on climate sustainability. And as you could see, I don't know whether it's here, we also work with multiple uh, VC, private equity firms like Sequoia, Lightrock, uh, uh, and couple of uh, one pension fund, which is Omer, which is a Canadian pension fund. So when you work with a Sequoia or a, or a, or a Omer, uh, then sector cuts across because whatever they invest in, you have to kind of work with them. It can be edutech, it can be fintech, it can be gaming, it can be crypto. So all of these becomes uh, areas which we cover. So I think, yeah, that's it. Uh, I'll stop here. You guys have yeah, questions, basically. Questions, doubts, yeah, comments. I think most might a few might be aware that we're recruiting around that. If you have any questions, this is the right time to ask, I guess. Also, in your, uh, if you can also kind of let us uh, tell us more about what your curriculum looks like so when you when you have a when you talk about policy, advocacy, work, uh, or curriculum, if you can tell us more about what your institute kind of talks about or teach about, teach. Um, I'm sorry, is this um, regarding GTI? Yes. Um, Dashita, would you like to handle that? Uh, sure. Uh, sure, Manas. So as our curriculum, we have uh, two main programs, we, like the all MBA scholars and the policy scholars. So in our, in our session today, we have the, both the scholars and the fellows. So we have master classes on the policy consulting in which we learn from the industry leaders. And uh, for example, Arun Myra in the past, he was uh, in one of the policy consulting master classes. He came and shared the cases around the public sector and the international affairs sector and few examples which the BCG consultants solve. So we learned that from the it's a in a practical model from the, from the industry leaders. Sure. I believe okay. there's one question on the chat in the chat box. Um, two, I think. Yeah, Shardol, is there any role played by Chase in the implementation of these solutions, solving existing gaps? Um, not on on the on the ground, not on the solution side of it, not on the execution. Uh, for example, on the beneficiary side, we, we don't we don't work there. That's uh, not uh, Chase's role. Uh, is Chase open to internship opportunities for students? Yes, we are. Yeah. In general, we do have uh, internships going on, but it's a little ad hoc. But you can send your resume over in case you're interested. Uh, if you guys want to go through, we, do, do we have time, Shah? Uh, we have time, Darshita. Lead up. I think we have, Shah. Yeah, Lida, please go ahead. I think, Shah, we have time till 3 p.m. Okay. So, uh, Shah, if you can uh, kind of uh, put that uh, deck up again and go through case studies, maybe you can take them through a couple of case studies. What do we do? Yes, yeah, Manash and Sharan, hello. Uh, Hi. So, yeah, I have a question. Uh, so could you uh, tell us a bit about your recruitment stage? I mean, the processes, the steps that are involved from the time we submit in our applications, resumes, till the selection. Sure, um, I can uh, take that. Um, so essentially what we do is of course, first you put in your resumes and what we'll end up doing is we'll end up shortlisting based on your resume, seeing whether you have the requisite qualifications and it's a little competitive. So what will happen is in sometimes you might end up being shortlisted in other times where we have a lot of applicants, we're going to be shortlisting fewer ones. 
uh, but that's generally the first stage you have to fill, it, fill up a form and we get some information about you and like on the basis that we do our initial assessment um now there are two types of processes we follow after this for now what we're following is that after you've submitted after you've submitted the form we can come back to you if you're shortlisted and send you an assignment we're doing that because we have a lot of applicants right now and then we won't have the time to personally interview everyone before we get to that stage so we'll be giving everyone an assignment uh thereafter we'll be grading the assignment uh, i think we'll give you about a week to complete the assignment after that we'll grade it and then we'll be reaching out to people who are shortlisted for an interview uh the interview is largely to try and understand your motivations and to see if you'll be a cultural fit for the team and uh, yeah after that there may be a confirmation call with manush following which there's an offer oh that's basically the process in a nutshell i can para yeah Sorry, am I sharing this yet, or has it not come up? Not yet. Okay. Sorry. Give me a sec. Go down. Yeah. Yeah. This is. Yeah. So this is uh, again when I talked about uh, uh, building coalitions and all. So uh, one of our client is rockefeller foundation uh, and uh, they 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 uh, during the, the entire covid pandemic they they were kind of uh, uh, so they were asked or they kind of uh, decided to come up with a road map for equitable and cost effective uh, way of testing and tracing covid in india so after the first wave uh, there was a need which emerged from various government stakeholders about why we kind of need a, a kind of a road map if the pandemic hits us again so how do we kind of there should be a, a, a learning from what has happened and how we go forward basically so while doing that one way to do with this kind of go back to a, a health institute come up with a paper or uh, and and then then kind of uh, obviously take a lot of evidence from the ground talk to multiple stakeholders and and come up with a report which can be submitted to government of india but here what differently we did was we we at the beginning of the entire discussion we tried to put a expert advisory panel which are people if you can see the profiles here are very very uh, credible uh, industry names uh, from a technical point of view from a from a industry point of view from a bureaucracy point of view who have worked in the larger healthcare space over decades Uh, so and they all kind of agreed to come in as an advisor in this panel, uh, uh, not in a commercial way, because they all thought this is important uh, to, uh, because what we are going through was uh, was bad. So uh, so we again uh, simultaneously tied up with couple of uh, institutions uh, uh, and uh, technical institutions. For example, we also tied up with ISB uh, Hyderabad on the with the healthcare team of theirs. and and we start building the entire paper so while we building it was not like uh, built in silo so this panel was always there to guide or kind of hear them out at every stage of the paper building so when eventually after multiple rounds of discussion with the technical institutions institutes and these expert panels uh, Uh, the paper which came out was much more robust and much more solid because they know what is for example you might be the best healthcare institute but uh, about a bureaucrat who who has been a healthcare secretary of government of india will have a lot of practical inputs to give similarly a dg from IS, icmr will have a lot of practical inputs to give so these inputs were kind of built in in the paper from day one and eventually what came out was a much more uh, 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 solid robust paper which was eventually accepted by uh, uh, senior stakeholders in the government of india including health and the principal scientific advisory office uh, which reports to the pm office basically so again that was one uh, interesting way of how you also build coalition while you are trying to put your point across so this kind of a coalition is becomes becomes so strong it is it becomes difficult for for government to ignore this kind of a uh, uh, submission Uh, Salam, is there anything else down? This is the impact of it. This is the impact. Again, 
uh, again, we're talking here, this, this case studies are not, uh, not uh, corporate case studies, which are more from a, a clients of us who does uh, work around the space of health. And these are global not-for-profit foundations. Like one of the foundations uh, uh, also had the, had the priority to look at the, look at the entire malnutrition space. Uh, if you guys come from, any of you come from healthcare, you'll know the burden of malnutrition in the country. And, and uh, while we keep talking about the malnutrition numbers and all, we don't usually talk about severely acute malnutrition kids, basically, uh, which is a sizable number. So here, the idea was while the entire portion of a portion uh, 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 kind of a uh, roadmap was kind of drafted, discussed and come up, it was coming out. Uh, the, the government was actually uh, knowingly or unknowingly ignoring the entire SAM burden, the severely acute malnourished uh, kids burden. So here, one way to again going traditional way of going is to go and talk to the healthcare uh, bureaucrats or the uh, Women Child uh, Development Ministry and and argue it out why they should look at the SAM uh, uh, community, SAM burden in the country. But what we did was a little different. We said ki, it's more about seeing is believing. So we did, uh, we kind of worked with a very renowned uh, 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 photographer uh, who agreed to kind of go into multiple districts of Maharashtra, Assam, Assam and Chhattisgarh and look at what is the situation of, uh, of these kids in, in the last mile. So again, here, what happened was uh, he, he could bring a lot of videos and pictures of what was happening, what the reality is. Uh, uh, though uh, the 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 picture from from uh, from uh, for staying in Delhi or Mumbai is very different, but if you actually go there, uh, it is very different. So those documentary evidences was again used by us along with the photographer with a small exhibition in Delhi where we call multiple important people for the exhibition. We call important key opinion leaders, member of parliaments, MLAs, uh, bureaucrats to come and see. And and the documentary which was made was very moving. It actually is. It talks about what situation, what is the situation of those kids uh, at the last mile, basically. So again, this this was one area. Then we did a lot of media outreach. For example, we we convinced uh, a, a dozen of member of parliaments to write on this issue, why this should be kind of looked into. Then we kind of uh, worked with multiple social media uh, ex kind of what do you say uh, experts or influencers. Uh, and, and made them realize why they should also look, pick up this topic and talk about it. So eventually what happened was uh, the, the entire impact of it was uh, when Potion Ma was announced uh, and, 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 and Sam uh, was announced, sorry, Potion Ma was announced, uh, the policy came out. It actually talked about the Sam, uh, uh, it, it actually recognized the fact Sam is a huge uh, kind of a, uh, burden or a, or a catastrophic to waiting to happen basically in the, in the country. So that was recognized by the government of India, which was a big win for what we all kind of uh, start to achieve, uh, work to achieve basically. So again, this is how you do it. So how creatively you do, do it becomes the advocacy role of a partner like us. Uh, uh, caution this, uh, so, so, so Sharan, this more. Again, these are similar ones. I, I'll stop here. Yeah. Again, if I if I look at, I, I talked about the battery battery side of it. For example, what we did for them. Similarly, uh, the big tech companies and and and, and uh, startups, uh, we again work very very closely with them and see how how uh, how differently we can put our point across. Because uh, putting a point across is very very mundane, very regular. Everyone can do it. A law firm can do it. A big four can do it. Here, our experience of how we creatively put a point across becomes important. And just to add to what Manish was saying, like a law firm will take a legal perspective. What we do is we take a whole rounded perspective. We'll be looking at it. Sometimes we'll be looking at our arguments from sociologically, what will be the impact. Sometimes it'll be politically, what's the impact. Sometimes you'll be saying, hey, we're economically good for the country, right? So you basically try to recognize what the government really wants, what their incentives are, and try to push your point, point forward accordingly. It, it can be also at at a level of, uh, for example, while the political parties are building the manifestos before election, you can also meet the think tanks of the political party and explain them why they should pick, pick this up, why they, this is relevant for them to pick it up. So this is like, it's not, it's not, it's a never ending kind of a example you can keep giving. 
but this is some of the examples which we can talk about again uh, that's a very strong area of intervention while the manifestors are built uh, if you can put your point across there and if you can convince the the the, the people behind building the, the manifesto you guys know it's not the politicians who, who draft it it's the typical uh, manifesto team which which drafts it so how do you work with them uh, put your point across and they might take it on they might not take it but again that's one area of intervention Yeah, any last questions? Hi, uh, hi, Sharang and uh, Manish. Um, so my question is, uh, could you talk more about, you know, specific about the roles? What if you if you prefer any any specific background or profiles, any anything that you could, we want to sort of consider while we are applying, um, uh, you know, experience, um, you know, the same, yeah. Yeah, I'll take that. So first, uh, apologies for the music in the background. Uh, so essentially, uh, it depends on what level you're applying for. So for example, if you're applying to become a manager at the company, we would expect, hope that you have some experience with managing people before having direct reports, because then you'll understand a little bit about management, which means that it's easier for you to integrate into the company. Uh, similarly, client management also would be a good part over there. Uh, but in the more junior roles, we'll look more for attitude more than anything else. And your ability to research. You should be able to research, you should be able to communicate yourself well. And over and above that, are you willing to learn? Are you willing to grow? Those are the things you really look out for. Again, at the, at the uh, entry level or, uh, or uh, junior to mid level, it's also very important to see how someone can comprehend multiple documents and then communicate in the most effective way. That's very, very important because uh, uh, there are multiple uh, paper which comes out uh, in the in the policy making world. And how do you comprehend? Because the client, that's why hires you because we are supposed to comprehend for them and tell them what it means for them. So what are the key areas, key points? How do you communicate back to the client is very, very important. Yeah, that's a question. Or oh, is that just very familiar? Uh, hi. So, uh, like uh, yesterday, I went on your website. So, there you're, you're talking about that you are also working in sustainable development and in the energy ex energy di dimensions. So, like, uh, what was uh, what were what are the dimensions that we are working in, or what are the projects like to get a gist or the idea that we are, where you guys are working? So, again, uh, so we will not play a technical role. Uh, that's very clear. So, uh, for example, we're working for a large FMCG company at the moment, and we are looking at uh, how to kind of, uh, while they're in the journey of uh, making their supply chain carbon net zero, uh, at some point in the future, uh, we try and help working with them, how do they kind of communicate their achievements in the larger uh, uh, journey of becoming completely zero. So uh, here we are not technical experts. We'll not tell them, okay, you should uh, put less of uh, X oil in your machinery or how do you kind of do less of uh, uh, logistics movement in, 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 in the highways. We'll not say that, but that is their technical partner's role to do. We will come in on the communication part. We'll say, okay, this is what your journey looks like. And at every stage, how do you communicate it to the government stakeholders or the, the, the larger ecosystem of, uh, of stakeholders for them. Uh, again, why they do it is because it is also important to kind of, uh, if it's a topic which is kind of futuristic or if, if there's no uh, uh, financial uh, benefits attached to it. For example, at the moment, supply chain uh, uh, carbon zero has no subsidy attached to it from government. But can a FMCG company or, or, or a GSK or a Unilever, whoever is working on, they can eventually kind of uh, correct like, like carbon credits also. They can use use for carbon credits, or they can also communicate to the government and say, okay, this is our learnings while in a journey. So while you are coming up with a with a regulation later, for example, they are struggling with the plastics at the moment. For example, yeah? so that's a different story. But whenever they come on a supply chain part of it. 
and they come up with some some kind of a regulation or subsidy they can take the learnings from us so that's how a thought leadership thinking from a large uh, 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 company works that's why we uh, play a role secondly we also kind of uh, for example giz is a, is, is a partner of ours and giz uh, we work again on a program where we do a capacity building workshop for uh, moef uh, uh, functionaries so based on cop 26 whatever the learnings were what we do is we again pick up those for example even if even if a lot was discussed in cop uh, you don't expect a, a technical person or a bureaucrat to understand what it means for actual implementation in the country they might go go there hear them out but they they'll not absorb that so how do you kind of break it up for them with expert from gig with ex expert from the industry and do workshop for for them basically at the state and central level that that's what we do so again these are multiple ways of communication thank you so much i believe we've come towards the end of the question and answer session um if there's anyone else i think um just put it up on the chat box now because we're almost coming towards the end um before we have uh, one question uh yes yeah, yeah, one question sharang i would like to ask on the behalf of the gji community uh since 30% of our cohort is the freshers or the people with zero to one year of work experience so what aligned with the gha is india's mission and vision what are the three main skill sets or the attributes you're looking for the candidate in, in the candidates sorry this would be for the junior associate rather Oh yes, for the junior associates, right? Well, I'll give my answer, but of course, Manish is the final say over here. Uh, I'd say essentially it will be a lot about attitude, and like Manish said, uh, it's your ability to communicate. Are you able to first research, analyze, first finding the information, analyzing the information, communicating? It. So, from a functional perspective, those would be the main three things. From a personality perspective, it would be like. I you need some sort of tenacity to keep going in policy advocacy is my opinion because a lot of what ends up happening the outcomes there is an instant gratification right um it's not like marketing that you do one and then you see all right we've got five thousand sales here or something like that it's a long journey and it takes a bit of tenacity and perseverance to reach to the end of that journey. and i would probably look at people who seem to display that quality and the third is are you willing to learn because one day we are doing i'd like personally i'd be doing one day tourism another day uh, energy or third day climate change or fourth day i'll be working on something in healthcare so how adaptable are you to picking up new subjects that's what i'd look at and i'll let manish add no yeah, absolutely correct so it's all about the aptitude is very important how you uh, it's also to kind of uh, be real in your approach be practical in your approach because it's not about when you say policy advocacy form people people usually get confused with the uh, policy formulation part so they expect they will be sitting with secretary government of india or or a minister and start drafting laws or drafting acts so that doesn't happen so that, that so you have to know what reality what part we play for that you have to become either a politician or a bureaucrat so for what play role we play the what as long as you are clear or, or the candidate is clear about uh, uh, what to expect from a public policy consulting role uh, that's the attitude part of it it is it is very very useful for both of us and oh, also, also also to uh, the uh, uh, the the flexibility of uh, picking up any any kind of uh, mandate for example sometimes it can be as basic as uh, getting a getting a gate pass in a ministry uh putting a uh, news summaries in the morning so the learning starts from there for example if you if you do a uh, uh if you if eventually have to do a lot of conviction to the minister of commerce it starts from making a gate pass for your senior or for your uh, for your client or for your donor it can it can it can it can, it can be that so we still make trial and we still make gate passes for our, our donors or our clients and our uh, uh, colleagues so so you have to be here yeah. it's it's a it's a it's a you roll up your sleeves and do everything basically yeah there've been times where manish and i have been sitting outside a bureaucrat's yeah. office literally waiting for those 2 minutes to yeah. try and just get 
five words and to get something more. Right? So, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Okay. Um, is there any more questions from your side, Ashita? Oh, I think all good from my end. And uh, with that, having said that, I uh, post the session. We'll be sharing the multiple positions open or uh, open at Chase India with the entire DJ community along with the application form. And uh, after a week, we'll get back to you with the applications. Uh, my can I request uh, everyone to just uh, so I. Uh, Put a Google post out. I can share the link. If you can just uh, put in your applications over there, just write reference so uh, GGI because otherwise, when it comes in multiple places, it becomes a lot harder to track everything. This will just be uh, easier sure. for me. Uh, Sharon, just to add to that, we'll be creating a Google application form. So once Perfect. the candidate gets filled, we'll share with you. Perfect. Sounds good. Thank you, everyone. Yes. Um. Thank, thank you, you so Manas. much. For thank you, Sharon. Thank you. And thank you to everyone who joined here and all the very best in the applications. Thank you. Have a good day. Bye. Thank, thank you. you.